All right, everyone. I invite you to lie down on your back in Sukta Baddha Konasana, opening the hips. So Luke is going to be assisting me today. Um, if you're feeling any tightness in your hips, that when you bend your knees apart, the thighs lift up uncomfortably, grab a couple of blocks or two equally um, thick objects that you can comfortably place under your outer thighs like this and come to lie down on your back. So feet together. You might like to turn your palms to face up, arms slightly away from your sides, or to help center and ground, left hand on the middle of your chest, right hand on your lower belly, and then maybe close your eyes. Your shoulders soften downward towards the floor, away from your neck. Giving yourself a moment here before we start to shift things around. Just take a look at what is. What are you carrying in your physical being, emotional being? Feel the parts of contact between the ground beneath and your body. And bring your attention to your breathing. Allow in a slower breath. And feel the length of your exhale as you open your lips. A few more times inhaling lower through your nose and gently audibly to your mouth you might even like to hold the breath in at the top for a few seconds and really just feel out that you've completely inhaled and then at the bottom holding the breath a few seconds and really feel out the difference of emptying completely I'd like to start the practice with a poem by Dorothy Hunt. It's called Peace With What Is. Do you think peace requires end to war or tigers eating only vegetables? Does peace require an absence from your boss, your spouse, yourself? Do you think peace will come some other place than here? Some other time than now? in some other heart than yours. Peace is this moment without judgment. That is all. This moment in the heart space where everything that is, is welcome. Peace is this moment without thinking that it should be some other way, that you should feel some other thing, that your life should unfold according to your plans. Peace is this moment without judgment. This moment in the heart space where everything that is, is welcome. Now, as you continue to deepen your breath, closing your lips, invite a warmth throughout your body as you gently constrict the back of your throat, creating a gentle whisper in and out through your nose. As you listen to the sound of your own breathing, something so subtle that requires much more of your attention, more of your listening, let's invite those qualities into the physical practice. That of cultivating awareness to subtlety. Feel and hear your breath sustained equally in and out. Then bring your hands to the outsides of your thighs. If you have objects underneath, just slip them outside of your mat off to the sides and then slowly lift your thighs up so that you can step your feet onto the ground. Separating your feet a little wider than your hips distance, let's do a little bit of the opposite with the legs, dropping your knees together to touch, 
so that you broaden space across your lower back, your sacrum. And with an inhalation, raise your arms slowly towards overhead, catching hold of opposite bent elbows with your hands. As you exhale through your nose, continue to draw your shoulder blades down your back ribs. Let the arms fall towards the ground behind you. Breathing in, feel your collarbones gently widen. And breathing out, feel your belly soften downward towards your back body. And then switch the hold of the elbow on top, softening the tops of your shoulders away from your neck. Feel the natural space at your throat, welcoming your breath. That we'll be moving in just a short moment, even continuously. I invite you to bring this feeling of stillness within the motion, in that state of flow. Keep listening. Now, as you bring your hands back to your thighs or your knees, draw your thighs towards your chest and begin to rock in any way that feels good to you, just to give your back a massage against the floor. And whatever direction is comfortable for you to roll over to, press the ground away and lift your torso upright, coming down to all fours. So as you come down to hands and knees, preparing for cat-cow moving the spine, set your knees right under your hips, but plant your wrists about two inches ahead of your shoulders. And let's spin out the fingertips to give the inner wrists and forearms a stretch. Any degree may be facing the outer edges of your mat or your knees. Now on an inhale, glide your spine forward before coiling your chest up so the shoulders soften down. As you exhale, tuck your toes behind you. Keep your knees on the ground as you contract your belly to dome your spine. Release the toes and inhale, glide your chest forward and up again into cow pose. Tuck your toes and exhale, round your back as you contract your belly. Have it on your own about three more slow cycles of breath. Feeling what sensations might be held in your spine, the front and back of it. When you finish your third exhalation on your own, relax to a neutral spine. Turn your index fingers to face forward so they're parallel to each other. And then lift your hips high, coming into Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dot. Spend the first few breaths any way you'd like to introduce your body into this position. Whether pedaling your feet, softly shaking or nodding your head, or right away being still. Allow your spine to lengthen at both front and back by firming your hands flat into the earth and rebounding a lift up through your shoulders and hips, drawing your weight towards the rear of your mat down through the backs of your legs and heels. Remember to bend your knees as much as you need to, really feel length in the front and back of your torso and to not feel any strain in the back body or rounding in your shoulders. Let go of the head, let it hang freely like a ripe fruit about to fall from a tree. And then steady your gaze halfway towards your feet on the ground. Let's take three more breaths, letting the body be still. Now look forward just inside of your right thumb tip. And with your next inhale, step your right foot there, set your left knee to the ground and untuck your back foot. Press your hands onto your front thigh as you draw your tailbone towards the earth and perhaps you can step forward. Lifting your back ribs away from your tailbone, let your belly gently firm inward. And with a deep inhale, broaden your chest, softly coil it up, exhale in, Release your shoulders further down your back. 
Now, if your balance feels pretty stable, I invite you to reach your hands behind your back and interlace your fingers. Slide the knuckles of your hands down the back of your left thigh or glute, wherever you can comfortably lean into, feeling a little more lift in your sternum. By bending your elbows closer together, let your collarbones broaden. Here in Anjaneyasana, let's take one more deep breath. And set your fingertips to frame your right leg. Curl your right toes up, flexing the foot, and plug your right thigh bone back so that your two hips evenly face forward as you straighten your right leg. If you have blocks, you can place your hands on those platforms to prevent rounding your shoulders. As you inhale, broaden your chest forward, look slightly ahead of your toes, and as you exhale, continue to lift the chest as you fold. Each inhale, finding more length through the center of your spine. And as you exhale, let the belly lift towards your lower back while you hinge from your hips. Let's take one more breath here in Ardha Hanumanasana, half split. Then re-bend your right knee, set your hands on the ground, and step back to downward facing dog. Allow a deep breath here. Now look just inside of your left thumb tip, and on your next in-breath, step your left foot lightly there, and set your right knee onto the ground, untuck your toes. Press your hands on top of your left thigh to lift your torso upright. Feel a slight lift of your frontal hip bones as you anchor your tailbone down, and if you can, even slightly forward. Lifting your back ribs away from your tailbone, broaden your chest and soften your shoulders down. Listening to the sound of your breath. Now, if your balance feels pretty stable, reach your hands behind you and try switching the interlacing of your thumb and index finger on top, tracing the knuckles of your hands down your right glute, maybe down your right thigh. As you scissor your left hip back, keep your hips evenly facing forward. Feel your heart space blossom open and rise up with a sense of buoyancy. Two more deep breaths. Now set your fingertips on the ground or blocks to frame your left leg, curling your left toes up, plug your thigh bone back into the hip socket, aligning your two hips evenly to face forward, lengthen your spine as you inhale, hinge from your hips as you exhale, little by little, exploring the range of your forward fold. Here, offer for the back your left thigh, your hamstring. This time as you inhale, bend your left knee, look forward and exhale, step your right foot hips distance from your left at the top of your mat, forward fold. Parallel your feet, bend your knees at least a little bit and as you press your fingertips on the ground ahead or your legs, inhale into a half forward fold and pause for a few breaths, continuously lengthening your chest and crown of your head forward. As you steady your gaze towards the tip of your nose, feel a slight lift of your belly, elongating your lower back as you soften the shoulders back too. Allow your weight to sit a little heavier onto the balls of your feet. One more in breath. Keep all of the spaciousness and length as you exhale to hinge again. From down to your feet, inhale, sweep your arms up towards the sky, watching your palms meet while relaxing your shoulders down. Exhale, trace your thumbs down the center line of your body, mountain pose. Moving into a continuous flow of two 
sun salutation A's. Inhale, circle the space around you. This feeling of welcoming and gesture. Exhale, bow forward. This feeling of reverence. Press the ground of your legs. Inhale, lift your heart and lengthen. This feeling of focus and intention. Carefully place your hands in the ground. Step into your version of playing. As you exhale, glide forward and lower. Taking Cobra on the first round, ground your pelvis and tops of your feet and breathe in. Feel a buoyancy at your chest. Press the ground away and exhale, lift to your belly as you draw your hips back into downward facing dog. Let your eyes steady, breath re-steady, body still. Preparing to walk or lightly jump ahead, look past where you want to land your feet with bent knees. At the bottom of your exhalation, hold your breath out, lift your pelvic floor to softly travel to the front of your mat. Then inhale, press with your fingertips, lengthen your chest forward. Exhale, fold in. Root down to your feet. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead. Again, this gesture of welcoming. What are you welcoming? Perhaps it's open acceptance of what's here and now. Breathe in, circle your arms towards the sky. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift your chest, look forward. This time, step to plank again or float back into Chaturanga if you feel ready. Into Cobra or Upward Facing Dog, deeply inhale. Then exhale into downward facing. We're going to add something this round. So with your feet hips width apart, inhale, raise your right leg behind you. As you exhale, step your right foot very slowly outside of your right hand, lowering your back knee. Scoot the left knee back an inch or two. So as you lean your torso forward, you could offer a stretch in the top of your left thigh hip. As we open up the right outer hip, you could choose to keep your right foot flat on the ground, right knee hugging your right shoulder. Or for more attention to your IT band, first stabilize your right knee by flexing the foot. Keep that. Then splay your right thigh open. Continue to scissor your right hip back. Stay about four more breaths, and if you want to go a little deeper into the sensation of your right hip, you can come down onto your forearms. Less sensation, come up higher, maybe hands on blocks. And as you listen to your body in each posture and each side of each posture, notice anything that arises in sensation, in emotion, in thought form. Cultivating a sense of open awareness without having to judge. Good or bad, better or worse. The state of equanimity is so solid in the Niyamas, the second limb of yoga, Santosha. If you'll remember that, it means contentment. Cultivating a sense of contentment. Start to walk the right foot to the front and center of your mat between your hands. Preparing for warrior two, straighten your back leg and spin the heel down. Align your right heel to intersect the arch of your left foot, then cartwheel your arms apart to rise. Now feel as you're rolling your right outer hip slightly under your body, you're directing your tailbone straight downwards as much as you can. A lift of the frontal hip bones allows you to Balance your pelvic bowl upright so the spine feels tall and spacious. And as you open your arms with energy through all of your fingertips, find a softness in your shoulders, a softness in your face, and even your eyes, though you're steadying your gaze.
Take one more deep breath. And as you exhale, cartwheel your hands to the ground. Let's step into downward facing dog. Once there, inhale, raise your left leg behind you. And very slowly as you exhale, set the foot outside of your left hand for lizard lunge. Set your right knee on the ground then scoot it back another inch or two. Decide if you wanna keep your left knee hugging your left shoulder so sole of the foot is grounded. Or if you wanna focus a bit more on your IT bend, flex your left foot to stabilize the knee while splaying your left thigh open. Just to lean on the outer edge of the foot, but not the ankle. Now as you breathe, open your chest. Let the shoulders relax downward. Perhaps you explore a deeper sensation in your hip by lowering onto your forearms, or less sensation by elevating your hands on blocks. In mindfulness, the saying is that what we resist persists, and that much of our suffering in the moment comes from resisting what is occurring. Can we sit within discomfort at times, not intentionally inflicting pain on ourselves, of course, but just being recognizant of a reaction to jump out of something, perhaps. When it starts to feel uncomfortable or challenging or unknown, fears might want us to jump out of the situation. Can we breathe, create space to observe, observe our own inclinations as well? Let's start to walk the left foot to the front and center between your hands. Straighten your right leg and spin the heel down. Align your left heel to the arch of your right foot and then windmill your arms to rise up. Vira Vidrasana too. As you roll your left outer hip slightly under your body, allow your pelvic bowl to align neutrally as possible upright where you intend to balance the height of your two hips, contain your center, and lift up through the center of your spine. And arms wide open, steady gaze, find areas where you could soften so that the posture holds a balance, just like the balanced state of mind and breath that you're intending. Warrior two, such a wonderfully grounding posture, enhancing the state of equanimity. On an exhale, lower your fingertips to the top of your mat and let's step the right foot next to the left so they touch, the feet touch. Then inhale, bend your knees together to touch, sink your weight towards your heels into chair pose. So now a continuous flow of sun salutation B. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, press the ground of your legs, lift your chest. Step to plank or float into chaturanga to lower as you breathe out. Inhale into cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale into downward dog. Let's try one breath each motion. Inhale, raise your right leg. As you exhale, softly land the foot inside of your right hand, but separate your feet hips distance and face forward. Dropping your back heel, inhale, rise all the way up to warrior one. As you exhale, lower through plank into your vinyasa. Breathing into cobra or upward dog, or maybe you're practicing cat cow instead. When you arrive at downward facing, inhale, raise your left leg. Then exhale, set the foot lightly inside of your left hand. Feet hips width apart, drop your right heel, and face forward as you inhale to rise. Warrior one. Ride the exhale down through Chaturanga Dandasana. Your chest up as you inhale. Drawing your hips up and back as you exhale. Now finishing side two, pause here, steady your gaze and body for three to five cycles of breath. Let the stillness set the tone of 
intending to listen, intending to observe, and find peace with what is in the moment. Now, as you're ready, forward past where you want to land your feet on empty breath, walk or float to the top. Then inhale, lift your chest, lengthen forward. Exhale to fold. Knees together, feet together. Inhale, sit back in chair. Then exhale to rise up, finishing the first of two cycles. Last one, Surya B. Inhale, chair. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Step to plank or float to Chaturanga as you breathe out. Continue at your pace of breath for your chosen vinyasa. And when you arrive at downward facing, inhale, raise your right leg. Exhale, set your right foot inside of your right hand, face forward. Inhale, rise to warrior one. Exhale, lower into your vinyasa. And if no vinyasa, step to downward dog and continue on side two on your own. Finishing side two at your own pace of breath. When you arrive in downward dog, three to five breaths in stillness. Now, before we continue forward, we're gonna plug in another posture here. So look behind your right wrist and set your right foot there. Spin your back heel down and bring your hands to your hips. Engage the front muscles of your thighs and your belly leading with your chest. Inhale to rise. Now for me, this is still quite big of a stance. So I'm gonna shorten mine, maybe another foot. Just find the right amount of space between your two legs so that your feet are entirely grounded. Your legs can be straight and your two hips are easily facing forward without feeling like you're trying to balance on a tightrope. And let's open the chest by bringing the hands behind your back. Whether you choose to press fist to fist or hold opposite elbows or come into reverse prayer, palm to palm, fingertips up slightly towards between the shoulder blades. Then spread your toes so you're not gripping the mat. Firm the fronts of your thighs, your belly again. And then inhale, lift your chest, broaden it. Soften the shoulders down, then exhale with a feeling of a flat back or even a slight back bend, start to hinge from your hips, keeping your hips leveled. Each inhale, ground to your feet and lengthen your spine. Each exhale, perhaps fold a little more. So about three more breaths here in Parsvottanasana, pyramid pose. Now we're going to enter a twist. So start to lift your spine parallel to the floor. Keep steadying your breathing. Lower your left fingertips either on the left side of your right foot, maybe on a block, or for a deeper and more challenging twist on the right side of your right foot, maybe on a block. Use your right thumb to hook your right outer hip crease slightly back so that you could level the height of your two hips as though you could balance another block across your lower back. Maybe even use that. Then ground to your feet and inhale, lengthen your spine forward. Trace the midline of your mat with it. At your waistline, begin to turn your chest to the right, raising your right arm so the palm faces your right wall. Now feel both of your feet firmly grounded, especially your back heel, still flexing the front muscles of your thighs. Hug your outer hips towards your midline, stability in the lower back. Shoulders away from your neck, broadening the right side of your chest through your right hand reaching. Revolve triangle pose. Take one last breath. 
Then exhale your two hands onto the ground, stepping back to downward facing dog. Right into side two, downward dog. Look at your left wrist and step your left foot behind it. Spin your right heel down and bring your hands to your hips. Firm your belly in front of your thighs and inhale to rise up. Adjust your stance so that you can easily face your two hips forward, ground the entire soles of your feet, and straighten both of your legs. And then let's add the arms. Fist to fist, or hold the other elbow on top, or reverse prayer. Keep engaging your quadriceps and belly. Breathe in, lift and broaden your chest. Breathe out, start to hinge forward from your hips, little by little. Inhale, lengthen your spine some more. Feel stability through both feet. And exhale, hinge. Pyramid pose. One more deep breath. Now keep stabilizing through your feet, your belly. Lift your spine parallel to the floor and lower your right hand either onto the right side of your front foot, maybe on a block. If you want more challenge or a deeper twist, lower onto the left side of your left foot. Place your left thumb on the inner crease of your left outer hip, drawing it back to align your hips squared again, maybe ba balancing a block across the lower back. Inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, twist to your left. Raise your Continue with those two feet. Lengthen, exhale as you continue to twist. Harita Trikanasana. Revolved Triangle Pose. Last breath here. And let's set the two fingertips on the ground. This time, simply step forward to fold so that your feet touch at the top of your mat. Let's finish the sun salutation. Bend your knees together. Inhale, sink your hips low. Chair pose. And exhale to rise up. So standing tall in mountain, shift your weight onto your left foot. Turn out your right leg from the hip. And set your right sole against your inner left ankle, calf, or thigh for tree pose. Feel the rebalancing of your two hips so your pelvic bowl is as upright as possible, affecting what is above it. Shoulders stacking above hips. Maybe raise your arms up. So however you want to bear, bury your arms, let's take about three more breaths. In Vrikshasa. As you exhale, trace your thumbs down to your heart and set your right foot down. If you need, give your left foot a little circle or shake. Then let's turn out your left leg from the hip. Hug the inside of your right ankle, calf or thigh. Feel the balance of your pelvic bowl, spine upright. And then play with any variation in your arms. Can you still hear the qualities of your breath? Vrikshasana, tree pose. And set your hands together, your heart. Step your left foot down. Let's step the feet wide apart, facing the wide width of your mat, parallel your feet. If you're feeling tight in your hamstrings at all or your back, you may want to have two blocks in front of you to set your hands on. Bring your hands to your hips and inhale, roll your shoulders back, lift your chest. As you exhale, hinge from your hips, allow a little more weight to tilt towards the balls of your feet than your heels, then lower your fingertips. Breathe in, imagine pressing your heart through the gates of your arms, lengthening your neck. Now pause here a few breaths. Remember that you could bend your knees any amount to eliminate rounding your back. Feel your belly lift slightly towards your back body. You feel that engagement of your abdomen like you would in plank. 
look ahead of the floor or ahead of your hands on the floor. So your sternum is lengthening forward. Feel the broadening of your chest. Can you find a semblance of plank pose here? Not only in your torso, but even in the muscle engagement of your legs. Front thigh muscles engage, heels firming into the earth. Now continue to walk your hands back any degree that you can maintain length in your spine, especially your neck. So the shoulders don't begin to round towards your ears. Now you might even be able to step your hands back so that your fingertips align with your toes, bending your elbows straight. As you would do when you're lowering through your vinyasa from plank in the posture that's called Chaturanga Dandasana. For those of you that are able to walk your hands behind your feet so that the top of your head meets the ground or maybe even meets a block, you might be able to create a triangular base out of your two hands and the crown of your head. Now, if you're doing that, press the floor away firmly with your hands and actively lift your shoulder bones up away from your neck and feel that you're maintaining the natural curvature and space in your neck. Notice your sitting bones, they might begin to lift a little higher. Now, I'm taking you through the preparation of tripod headstand. If you have any neck injuries, or injuries that you think might not allow you to go further, then just stay where you are. Otherwise, as you continue to contract your belly, steady your breathing, pick up one foot and place that knee on top of the upper arm, using the upper arm like a shelf to push off of. Maybe you pick up the other foot and do the same as you would in crow pose. Keeping the arms parallel, the shoulders lifting away from the neck, hands pressing the floor, so that they're bearing more of your weight than your head is. Maybe you start to lift your knees into your belly like a cannonball, all up in the belly. Maybe you start to unfold your legs as the feet come together and flex, lifting the big toe mounds towards the sky as though a rope was pulling your ankles and tailbone up towards the ceiling, like tree, like mountain pose, but upside down. Can you feel the stacking of these major joints? your ankles, your pelvis, your shoulders. So whatever variation you're in, take your time to reverse the stages to come back to that wide-legged forward fold. Bending the knees back onto the upper arms or setting the feet straight to the ground if that's possible. And once you're in your forward fold again, walk your hands forward, come up halfway, bend your knees a lot and reach your hands behind your back, interlacing your fingers. Bend your elbows closer together, take a deep breath as you lift the chest and gaze forward. Exhale, fold in again, allow your weight to shift forward, completely drop your head. If your head is touching the floor and you want to be able to shake it or nod it a few times, try stepping your feet closer together. About three more breaths of stretching your arms away from your lower back and lifting your shoulders away from your neck, finding as much freedom and space in your neck as possible. You might enjoy fluttering your lips or sticking out your tongue and exhaling loudly with mouth wide open. Then bring your hands back to your hips, bend your elbows towards the sky, bend your knees, leading with your chest, inhale, slowly rise. Let's come on down to your knees. So if you have any knee issues and sitting in hero's pose like this doesn't feel okay, Perhaps an adjustment of a block between your ankles or two blocks. The higher the prop is, the less your knees have to, to bend. If that alleviates any um, issues with the knees, then take this version. If it doesn't, then what you'll practice instead as we open the quadriceps is from Sphinx pose. We often do this. We cross one forearm in front, we backstroke one hand, and we bring the, the heel towards the outer hip. So you can do that version about five or so breaths on each side. Otherwise, 
we're gonna start to lean back from hero's pose if you are sitting on your shins. Now, some of you might be able to move your calves aside and sit on the ground in between your ankles. Now, for any version of hero's pose, make sure that you're protecting the alignment of your knees by not turning out your feet. You want your toes to point directly back so that you could feel even your pinky toenails pressing into the ground. Knees no wider apart than hips distance. Try to keep your knees as close, uh, pressing into the ground, not lifting high up. And then from here, see how it feels to maybe walk your hands back slightly, lean the torso back slightly, ensuring that you're not compressing your lower back by envisioning your tailbone lengthening forward towards the space between your heels, a slight lift of your frontal hip bones. And as we explore another minute in this posture, you might even come back onto your elbows, making sure your knees stay on the floor. You might even use your two blocks and catch with a medium height block across your mat, just under the bottom tips of your shoulder blades, like a supported back bend. And then the tallest block underneath your skull. We often do in our yin class. We have perhaps 20 or more seconds left in this posture. Breathe in, feel what's there. Breathe out, stay with what's there. If you'll remember Pema Chodron's teaching of compassionate abiding is to be able to sit with whatever we're feeling in the moment without having to distract ourselves from it. And we use the breath, the inhale to see what's there and the exhale to loosen the grip around it, but to still be with it. So just like you've gradually gone into the depth of this posture that you're in, take your time coming out of it. Allow several breaths. So if you're lying back, you might use your forearms to press the ground, contracting the belly to slowly lift your chest, eventually lift your head. And if you're in Sphinx pose, we're all gonna meet on our hands and knees and in downward facing dog just allowing the backs of the knees to open up after that posture. And if you need another vinyasa here, feel free to flow on your own through plank, chaturanga, cobra, or upper dog. We're going to set up for two rounds of heart opening camel pose, Ustrasana. So let's come down to our knees. And if you need some cushion underneath, feel free to fold your mat thicker on that end. Then please take one of your blocks if you have one and hug it firmly between your thighs, spacing your knees apart accordingly. Tuck your toes behind you and place your hands on your lower back so that your fingertips are pointing down allowing the flesh of your glutes to release downward towards the backs of your knees. Create space in your lower spine. Firm the belly gently against it. As you bend your elbows closer together, feel your chest broaden. Take a deep breath and lift your chest. Roll your shoulders behind you and down. Begin to coil your chest up, lifting your gaze without collapsing your head completely. You stay for your own count of five to 10 more breaths in this posture. You might explore holding one heel with one hand and then switching hands or both heels with both hands as long as your pelvis can stay directly above your knees, not sliding behind them. So that you're focusing the bend in your back to occur just under your shoulder blades, not so much in your lower back. Like many of the back bends, this posture encourages expansion of the lungs. So use it to feel the fullest breaths in. 
as well as eliminating rounding in the shoulders, tension in the trapezius, opens up the pectoral muscles. And now in an energetic sense, we focus on opening on Ahata Chakra, the heart energy center. Our ability to give and receive loving kindness, compassion. When you're ready to come out, place your hands on your lower back, slowly roll your spine upright and find a comfortable seat for about three breaths. Just being still and observing. And when you feel ready, take one more round, same posture, camel's pose on your own. So the purpose of the block is to firm the outer hips towards your midline. So if you don't have a block, just bring that intention. And if you're able to reach for your heels with your toes tucked and you wanna go further into the back bend, you could untuck your toes, flatten the tops of your feet on the floor so the heels are further away. your time when you feel ready to come out we'll meet sitting down again this time ready to sit for a little bit longer as we practice alternate nostril breathing so before we do that practice let's take a simple seated twist whether your legs are straight ahead or crossed back stroke your left hand behind your pelvis on the floor raise your right arm up Ground your two sitting bones and breathe in to lift your spine taller. Exhale, twist to your left and lower your right hand either onto to hold your left calf or to press the outside of your left thigh. Now relax the shoulders, broaden your chest, and as you breathe out, hollow your belly. Use the side muscles of your waist to generate perhaps a deeper twist. You might even explore the feeling of looking over your left shoulder. Take another deep in breath. And as you exhale, unwind and switch the cross of your legs if they're crossed. Back stroke your right hand behind your pelvis. Raise your left arm up. Press into the ground, breathe in, sit up a little taller. Breathe out, twist to your right and lower your left hand. Whether you hold the leg in front of you or press the outside of your right thigh away. Now notice the stacking of the crown of your head with your tailbone or above your tailbone. Find that alignment as you twist at your waist. Maybe you're looking over your right shoulder to stretch your neck. Take another deep inhalation. And as you exhale, unwind, find a comfortable way to sit for a short pranayama practice of Nadi Shodhana. Remember that this is a wonderfully brain balancing uh, breathing technique, left and right hemi hemispheres of the brain, as well as calming for the nervous system. I find that it helps to alleviate headaches, so that could be helpful too. So to start, rest your left hand on your lap you might like to bring the thumb and first finger to touch, just help to feel interconnected and concentrate. And then with your right hand, stick out your thumb, pinky and ring finger. Closing your lips, softly breathe and sustain the breath in and out through your nose. Relax the shoulders, sit tall and relaxed. Close your eyes and steady your gaze, just above, in between your eyebrows, right onto your forehead. Exhale this breath completely. Hold it out. Right thumb covers right nostril. Inhale to your left slowly. Hold it in. Last two fingers cover left nostril. Exhale to your right slowly. Hold it out. Inhale to your right.
hold it in. Cover right with thumb. Exhale to your left. Hold it out. Inhale through left. As you feel the pattern, continue at your own pace. Hold it in. Cover left. Exhale to right. Hold it out. Inhale through right. Hold it in. Cover right. Exhale through left. Hold it out. Keep going on your own. Finish the breath that you're on, then release both hands in your lap. Perhaps you keep your eyes closed and just allow a moment to pause and feel what is. Begin to lower onto your back. And as you lie down, draw your knees into your chest. Separate your knees to the outsides of your shoulders and catch hold of your ankles or outer feet, lifting the soles of your feet towards the sky. Happy baby. Let your tailbone be heavy against the ground, just like your shoulders relaxed away from your neck. Feel your breath and its natural flow. Bend your right knee into your chest and straighten your left leg forward onto the floor. Hugging your right thigh even closer. Then straighten your right leg onto the floor and bend your left knee into your chest. Hug the left thigh a little closer. Then release both legs, rolling your thighs inward and outward so your feet are like two windshield wipers. And then just let your feet flop in their natural way, wider than your hips distance. With your two thumbs, frame your spine at your mid back and then trace your thumbs downward towards your glutes. Lengthening your lower back, turn your palms to face up. Slide your arms slightly away from your torso and walk your shoulder blades further down your back ribs. Feel your neck naturally curved. Feel your skull completely supported. Now entering Shavasana.
as you feel your body resting in stillness here. If you would like to join our 10 minutes of guided meditation, begin to move your body slowly, starting with smaller parts like fingers, toes, maybe gently turning your head. Ease into a simple stretch. Stretch your arms, stretch your legs. Perhaps keep your eyes closed in the process. You might like to draw your knees into your chest. Turn over to your right side, resting your head in a fetal position. And when you feel ready, press into the earth support, lift your body upright to sit alertly and comfortably. If you're leaving us, namaste, thanks for joining our asana practice. So beginning our meditation practice, you might choose to continue closing your eyes. I invite you to just feel the environment that you are now sitting in, your own home space or wherever you are. Just take notice of any sounds around you, near and far. Take notice of anything you feel in your external space. Perhaps any movement or vibration on the ground. Allowing this external landscape to just be as it is. Feel your body supported by what you're sitting on. Now I invite you to become more curious of what you feel in your physical body. Are there any more pronounced sensations Asking you to pay attention with an open feeling of curiosity and gentleness. Bring your attention anywhere your body is more loudly calling for it. And if there's no particular area that's more prominent than the rest, just begin systematically on your own from the soles of your feet, slowly scanning your attention up each leg, detecting any subtle sensations. without needing to judge any of those sensations as good or bad, shoulds or shouldn'ts. And by an allowing presence to scan your body. You're simply taking in what's there. Now, if you haven't already, move your attention from your pelvis up your torso slowly on all sides, inside. Taking your time.
tending to the smaller parts of your body with a very patient, curious observation. Feeling your jaw, feeling your skull. You're simply bearing witness to what is in this moment. Now I invite you to bring your attention back to your natural breathing, feeling any slight movements, quality of its flow in terms of pace, depth. Allowing your observations to be non-judgmental as simply observing what's there. Bring your attention to your heart space, area at the center of your chest. The tender awareness. You notice anything there to your felt sense. A heaviness, a lightness. less physical, the more energetic feeling. And you be with any emotion you might detect held in your heart space right now. So that as your body naturally breathes in, again, you take it in. Whatever feeling or emotion is at your heart. And as your body naturally breathes out, you give yourself a kind, loving commitment to stay with what's here. Holding space for what you're feeling. You might find it helpful to place your hands on the center of your chest. A gentle, warm, nurturing touch. As the poet Deborah Hunt said, peace is this moment without judgment. That is all. We utilize meditation as a place to be intentional with our awareness, but it's an exercise the strength of our awareness comes in bridging this exercise into daily life application. 
So how might we hold space for what we're feeling in any given moment? Including a conflict with another being. Or stimuli that you're observing in your external environment. As you allow a deeper breath in, feel your heart center lift, broaden, join your palms to meet there. Bowing into yourself, I thank you for being willing and open to let me guide you through your practice today. Let's close chanting the sound of Om. Take a deep breath. The light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste. Namaste. Ah! <gasps>